just am seeing you all now. Um, okay, welcome everybody. I see some familiar faces here. Steve Piacenza, Kathy Fillion are here ready to do our Michael's Zoom class with all of you. Today is all about Mod Podge. I'm, let's, we're gonna wait to get some people on board. Um, so let me repeat myself a couple times. We're gonna be doing five different um, beach vibe home decor uh, projects using Mod Podge today. We're gonna be using a couple different formulas. We're gonna be using the gloss and the sparkle and um, it's gonna be everything from tissue paper to sand to seashells. We're gonna be working with um, canvas. We're gonna be working, we're gonna be showing some paper lanterns. We're gonna show you with tissue paper how to make these faux candles, the battery operated candles using tissue paper and sand. We're also going to be showing you with the Sparkle Mod Podge doing mason jars, uh, everything done from the inside. So there's going to be a lot of Mod Podge product, projects today, five in particular, again, using tissue paper, Mod Podge, sand, seashell. So it's going to be a fun day. Um, we also want to talk about, Plaid is going to be giving away a prize today. So make sure that you, in the chat room, Tell us where you're from, say hello, because it's gonna be a random drawing for one person with a nice basket of Mod Podge products. And we'll be announcing this throughout because more people will be joining on. Um, if people can stick to just the chats and no private messaging, because I'm not able to get to your private messages, so just stay on the uh, everybody um, chat. Um, again, it's all about Mod Podge today. We're going to be using the gloss formula. We're going to be using the sparkle formula, making five home decor projects with a beach vibe, a beach theme to show you guys. So it looks like there's a lot of people on board. Um, I'm going to be answering all your messages. Kathy is going to be showing you um, a really five great projects. So why don't we get started, Kath? Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, like Steve said, we've got a lot of different fun beach decor projects to show you. We're going to use the Mod Podge gloss um, and tissue paper. These are all really simple to do. And so we're just going to dive right in. The, I'm going to quickly just show you some of the projects that we're going to be making. So this is one of the beach canvases. And this looks like it's painted but the whole thing is actually just done with tissue paper. So it's very simple to do. It's really fun if you're hosting like a craft night or something like that, or a Zoom craft along. This is a really fun project that everyone can do together. We're also going to do a really simple technique for some different types of home decor lighting. So these paper lanterns, and those are done with tissue paper as well. This is the tissue paper confetti that you find in the balloon aisle or the party section. We're going to be making over some of these uh, flameless candles using tissue paper and sand. We've got these really cool sparkly mason jars. This is a super simple technique using food coloring. And we're gonna do some bottle makeovers too. And all of this is just done with tissue paper. Tissue paper and then embellishments. We've got like pebbles to form a rock heart, all sorts of fun stuff. So let's just get started and we will um, start with the beach art canvas, okay? So here's our beach art canvas. And like I said, all of this here is tissue paper. The little white parts there is a, just a tiny bit of folk art paint, um, just acrylic paint. We've used sand and shells in this design as, as well. And yep, that's real sand. So I will be referring back to this one, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started on our blank canvas. So this canvas is um, 16 by 20. And I buy these super value pack ones. You get five for a really great price. So you could do this project on any size canvas that you want. Um, this is a staple back style, so you could pop it in a frame or you can just use this ledge here and a nail just to hang it onto the wall. So let's talk about the tissue papers. 
we're going to use um, a couple of different shades of blues. So you're gonna want, you can buy tissue paper, so let's start this way. You can buy them in solid packs like this, or you can buy them in ombre packs like this, so it goes from light to green. You can also buy multicolored packs. So in the multicolored packs, you're gonna get several different shades, plus like pinks, yellows, purples, that kind of thing. So you just wanna pick a bunch of different shades of blue. So you can go from light blue, medium blues, and then dark blue. This is almost purple. It is considered a blue, but it's, it's very, very dark. And then you're gonna want some either white tissue paper or Michael's had this green and white ombre tissue paper. So this is perfect too. If you wanted to paint this out, you could paint it just with different shades of blue folk art paint. So you would just do the same technique, but instead of doing tissue paper, you would layer your paint colors that direction. So I've gone ahead and I have uh, prepped out the tissue paper. So let's get that over here. Sorry guys for my big reach. My arms are short and my table is huge. Okay, so to prep out your tissue paper, you're gonna want some of your lighter color. You're gonna want a pretty big piece of that, okay? It's just torn. There is no real right or wrong way to do this. So you do not need to worry about perfect tears or anything like that. And tissue paper doesn't tear that great. So if you have pieces like this, it's perfect. There literally is no right or wrong way to do this. You're gonna want some long strips, but we're gonna be piecing all of this together. So if you get pieces that look kind of silly like this, don't worry about it, it's perfect. And little pieces are gonna be good too because you might be doing some patchwork. Then we're gonna need that for all of our colors. So we've got medium blues here and our light blues. So go ahead and separate these out. And then we have a little bit of our darkest color. So we're gonna start with our lightest color and then we're gonna move on to our darkest color. We're gonna use Mod Podge gloss today. And I have gone ahead and put my gloss in a recycled food container. And the reason why I like to do it in a food container like this is sometimes the tissue papers, especially the darker ones, have dye that comes out onto your brush. You'll see a little purple in your mix. You don't wanna contaminate your bottle. So just pour whatever Mod Podge you want into a small container that is either recyclable or something that you don't mind um, getting Mod Podge in. So we'll start with our big piece. And this piece has a little bit of green and then white. If you didn't have this, this paper is from Michaels. If you didn't have this, you would just use a light green tissue, a baby blue tissue, or um, a white tissue here. And what we're gonna do is just go ahead. I'm using a one and a half inch brush, but you can use whatever brush you have on hand. Foam brush, big brush, little brush. And I'm just gonna apply the Mod Podge directly to the canvas. I'm not worrying about the edges yet, or sorry, the side edges, I should say, because we're gonna be doing that at the very end. So I'm just doing a big giant triangle section here. And I've got my first piece, that's my light color. And this piece is gonna really be mostly where the sand goes. So I'm just gonna layer that on there. Don't worry about any of those lines, all of that disappears. Now, at this part, it's got a little bit more Mod Podge. And again, this is all kind of trial and error. None of these will turn out the same. You just start scrunching your tissue paper. So and we have a quick question. Is, I'm uh, sorry, Kath. Um, yes, this is gloss Mod Podge, guys. You can also use the mats. The gloss is going to give it a nice shiny finish. If you didn't want the shiny finish on top, you could use the uh, matte gloss. Yeah, and someone's asking if we diluted it. We did not dilute it. I just am not doing it from the bottle because I don't want any right. dust into the bottle. So you can see how we're crinkling it up and that's gonna create all that texture that creates those waves, the look of waves. So you just crunch it up like this. And then you're gonna go over it with more Mod Podge. 
and it ripped there. You don't have to worry about that because we're going over this and over this. So every time you have a little spot where it might be lighter or darker, that actually looks so nice for your project at the end because you want those highs and lows. It's an so organic like, look. Huh? It's an organic look. Yes, yes, exactly. You want it to look like the ocean. If you look at pictures of the ocean, there's always little pockets of white and light blue and dark blues. So now we're gonna take our darkest color, and just kind of crinkle it up, and that's gonna be up here in this top corner. So we start with our lightest, add our darkest, and then we'll meet them in the middle with all of our blues. So just add that there. Again, just crinkling it up. I'm gonna bring this up so you can see, hopefully, how crinkled up that is. You guys can see that. It's just very crinkly and messy. And all you do is just push it with your fingers. There's no real, you know, no science to this. Okay. Yes, you can use cut pieces of tissue. You can tear the tissue. You can also use cut pieces. Um, again, Kathy showed you how you can crinkle that up just to give it that organic look, that um, natural kind of wavy wrinkled look, which is representing kind of uh, the ocean. Yeah, so here's an example. This is one of our light blue pieces and that's what we're gonna do next. And this light blue piece, we're gonna be layering over that green section. But, you know, there's no, just add a little bit more of your Mod Podge down, layer it on. Yep, normal Mod Podge, everybody. She's using the gloss formula. This is a great thing for kids like you, you're asking. This uh, Mod Podge is non-toxic, so kids can be participating in this project with you. Oh yeah, absolutely. We'll just add some more here. And again, just kind of crinkling it up. Just add a little bit more up top. And you just keep doing that and adding all that texture. Once you get our next the row down, you just top coat it. And it looks milky and white here, but it will dry perfectly clear. And like Steve said, this is the gloss formula. If you wanted it really matte, you would just use the matte formula. If you wanted it somewhere in between, you could use satin. Okay, and we've got that little hole there, so let's go ahead and fill that. Wherever you have a hole, you just add a little piece of tissue right over it. You're just trying to blend these colors together. So you start from your lightest, and we're working our way to the darkest. So now we're gonna go to our next darkest color. Go ahead and get that separated. Kind of crinkle that up a little bit. And we'll add that right next to this dark color. And you can see here how it's sort of bleeding. Again, that's why you want to use a separate container. You don't want to get that color into your jar of Mod Podge. Yes. Just crinkle that. Let's do another little strip of that color right behind it. like that and then you'll just top coat it it's hard to imagine that all this is going to end up looking like a beach scene <laughs> yeah that's the that's the beauty of it though it's a great project there we go and now we will add our brighter blue color right in the center Yes, Morgan, you have a great point. This project is so forgiving. Mistakes do not exist is what she said. Yeah. Like, absolutely. That's the beauty of doing things that are called organic because it is just layering on top of each other and watching it blend and form the way, the way it wants to. And that's how you get that really natural look. Yeah, because you want some of those lighter spots and then some of those darker spots. That's what makes it give the real ocean look. It dries clear, guys. It goes on milky white with the Mod Podge, but then when it dries, the milky white goes away and it dries clear gloss because we're using the gloss formula. If you didn't want that shiny, you could use the matte formula. You just keep layering. This is sort of my favorite ocean color here, this kind of brighter blue. So I'm doing a larger section of that. And the other thing is, is we're gonna top coat all of this with um, one large piece of the light blue, and that will really kind of mellow out all of your colors and blend them together. So we just 
keep top coating as you go. And remember guys, this is going to, for you guys that are coming in a little bit late on this, uh, this is recorded. So if you go to michaels.com, you're gonna be able to see this from the very beginning. Um, so don't worry if you've missed anything Kathy has done already. You can watch it from the very beginning uh, on just go to michaels.com and the videos are all stored there. There it is. It's right up in the, it's right up there in the link in the chat right now. Stacy put that oh, up there. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So just layer that up. So I have the foundation down. So this is just sort of the, the foundation, the first layer of all of the tissue paper is down and really, really wet. <laughs> so at this point, I made a second one so I can show you. At this point, I would let this dry and I would probably do this one more time just to add some more layer to it. And what I mean by doing it one more time is I would take another section of my light blue and I would crinkle it up and go right over where I did. In the finished one, this is this uh, technique that I just showed you, I did twice. And that's what creates that really good blend. So you just keep layering it up. You want it to dry in between so you can see where you have any holes. Because when it's wet, it's a little hard to tell. But I can see right here that I have a hole. So if, if you have a hole like that, you can just go in, you grab a little piece like this, you crinkle it up, and you just push it right onto that hole and glue it down. There, there, really it looks is, there is no right or wrong way to do this. It's just strips of tissue paper crinkled up and you mm -hmm. just wanna go from light to dark. I like to use several different shades of blues and a little bit of the green and the white. That's just because that's the ocean colors. You know, I've done this as a rainbow design before. We've done all different types like this. Um, you just wanna go from light to dark. That's the main thing. So at this so point, this, this will dry you guys in, a, in about a couple hours. I mean, overnight, of course, is always the best, as we say. But if you if you were looking to put something on top of this, yes, a um, uh, 24 hours overnight is always the best solution for, I think, any project that you're working with with Mod Podge. So here is one that I did yesterday. This is two layers, OK? And it's all dried and ready for the top coat, okay? Um, so what I wanna show you before I do the top coat is the side, okay? So I've glued all of the um, side pieces around, and then before framing it or whatever, I would obviously trim all that up, but it's the back side. So you just wanna add a little bit of Mod Podge to the side edge and a little bit to the back, and then you just take all of that excess and you create a nice edge with it. And that's really great if you're not framing your, your project, that makes it so that your art really wraps all the way around so you're not looking at a um, kind of blank edge. You could also glue some ribbons or trims there, anything like that, and just glue that down. Okay, so someone's now, asking if uh, you can do this on wood, and the answer is yes. Oh, yeah. This can absolutely be done on wood. It can be done on all sorts of surfaces, canvas, wood. Like we said, Mod Podge works on um, tin, ceramic, glass, canvas, wood. So tissue paper and all those surfaces work very, very well together. And Kathy's yeah. going to show you a little bit later um, on these surfaces, on different surfaces, on glass, on paper lanterns. So hang tight and we'll show you. There we go. There's a, there's a perfect example of it on, on glass. This is the same exact technique, but instead of the crinkling, we just did strips. Yeah. So, and that is- um, Ulster board, yes. That's the same blues. I'll just show you quickly. This vase, which we're gonna show you also, is um, the ombre paper. So it really, you know, what's funny is now you'll start to look like uh, looking at tissue paper differently. <laughs> like, ooh, what can I make with that? Um, if you are doing it on a different type of surface, like wood or something, you would want to uh, paint it a light color first. So you would want to paint it white or ivory, creamy color, something like that. 
um, if it was a real dark surface, you're, you would get a different look. You could do that, but it would have a different effect. So you might want to do a little test. Um, okay, so now I have one large sheet of the baby blue tissue paper. And when I said earlier that we were going to top coat this whole thing with one sheet of paper, this is what you want to use, the lightest color that you have. Not the white color, but the lightest light blue that you have. This finished piece has one sheet of light blue over all of this. And that's what helps blend all these different colors together. So to do that, you're just going to coat your entire canvas with the gloss Mod Podge. Gloss for shine, matte if you don't want a glossy look, satin if you want something in between. Yes, you can absolutely recycle your tissue papers from gift bags. It's a oh, great yeah. idea. You can do all sorts of projects with uh, the tissue paper that is saved. This, of course, uh, is a beach vibe, a beach, beachy scene we decided to do. But you know, this is this is tissue paper and Mod Podge are so fun to work with together for all sorts of projects. Again, you guys, you can watch this from the beginning. We've been asking people. People have been asking at michaels.com. If you can put that up again, Stacey, it'd be great. There it is. From the very beginning, you can see this class um, with a bunch of other classes that Michael has in their little um, Zoom vault. I like that, the Zoom vault. <laughs> the Zoom vault. Lots I of fun classes. I did not put any of the Mod Podge here because that's where we're going to be adding the sand. Okay, so now what we're going to do is put down our top coat and we'll go in and just give it a little bit of a smoosh. You can tear some of that off. Just tear a little bit of that off and we can use some of that where we might need to fill in a little spot. And just That's going to add that top layer of texture. I'm telling you guys, when I said there was really no rules to this, I mean, you can see I'm just smushing it up with my hands. I mean, there's nothing to it. Yeah, that top layer really blends the, all the underneath layers together. You can, it's wet right now. When it dries, it dries like this, you know? So it's, it dries and really, really makes it um, more blended. And then you'll go in and top coat that. Just top coat it. It looks milky. It's going to dry perfectly clear. And you will end up with all those beautiful highs and lows that makes it look like a real ocean scene. And I'm working the brush, you know, really trying to get the Mod Podge into all those different wrinkly areas. And that creates those little wave looking things. Get all that down. There we go. It's as simple as that. <laughs> so now, again, when it dries, I've got my white paint added here. So don't let that be distracting. But you can see it's going to dry clear, but you're going to get all those different highs and lows and all that texture. Yeah, the white areas are pink, guys. Kathy's going to be showing you that in a minute. Yeah, I'll show you so. that in a few seconds. So now, what we're going to do is add our sand. Let's see, let's make, <laughs> let's make room. So I've got an old pizza box. I am a big fan of, I don't throw things away like that. I use them for my craft projects and my projects that I'm doing. I've got some sand here. This is from the floral section, okay? Um, and we're just going to add our sand. I like to do just, like we said, kind of a sloppy, just a sloppy sloppy. You want some of that green to show still, but you don't want a straight edge. You want it to look like a real beach edge. Pull that back. Just like so. And we will add our first layer of sand. Just sprinkle that right on. The fun part.
And you can get sand in a couple different shades. So if you want to match, you know, to a vacation or something that has a darker sand, you can get a darker sand. Just kind of tap it around. And this is a really fun project for kids. It's a grown up project. It wasn't designed for kids, but kids love making it too. And just tap off. Oh, I needed a bigger pizza box, everyone. <laughs> okay, so now I see that I have a little hole in my sand. Just go in, top it off, and add a little bit more. And we're going to glue some shells to that too, so it's no big deal. Yes, okay, this, is real this. Sand. this is real sand, everybody. It's real sand. It's from the store, though. Real so bond it's, sand. <laughs> yeah, it's decorative sand, but it is real sand. Um, you get it in the flower department, like the floral design area. Um, they also have it in the kids' crafting area. Yeah. Um, lots of different colors um, and, and different shades also. There's darker shades, lighter shades. Um, some people use it as base filler. So that is the first, that, that's the foundation, basically, of the whole artwork. And now what I want to show you, I'm going to set this one aside, is the painting. And I'm going to be painting on our finished one because I've got a few more areas that could use paint. And for the painting, I'm going to use a damp sea sponge. If you didn't have a sea sponge, you can use a, a crinkled up paper towel. You could use an old cotton rag t-shirt type thing. Um, just anything, anything that you can crinkle up and make some texture with. Uh, and let's see, I've got some folk art paint. This is just plain old acrylic paint. So, and this is in uh, white. And this will create the little crashes of the waves. So just grab your sea sponge, your crinkled up towel, and you'll tap into the paint. Okay, tap in and then tap off. You want a pretty, not very much paint on there at all. And then basically you're just gonna look at your artwork and you're gonna see, okay, I wanted to put some crash lines right, right there. Oh, going too fast. <laughs> oh yeah, a tissue paper sunset would be beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna have some here. You, you can see that we did it here. Basically, you just want to look at your piece and decide where you want some wave crashes, okay? So I've got a little one started here, and the technique is going to just be a little pounce and a flick, okay? So a pounce and a flick up, pounce and a flick. And that just creates just those really simple little tiny waves crashing. So you're just going to tap it down and then flick it up. And that's it. And then down here, I like to add a little bit just along the edge, just kind of tapping so you can see where you've got the water coming in. And it's okay if it comes into the sand because naturally on a beach, that's what happens. You have that white part kind of, you know, shooshing up. So you can just go ahead and add white all along that edge there and just barely tap. If you want to add a little tiny one and you don't want to have that big swoosh, just grab a tiny little bit of the sponge. It's kind of why I like using these sponges. You can really make a detail, you know, just kind of like that. So we have a question. Do you Mod Podge on top of the sand? You can once it is dry, but you do not need to. You, if you really want to seal it in, um, yes, you can Mod Podge right on top of that sand to hold it all together. And, and you can see, I did not on this one. And, you know, I, I don't, there's, there's like two pieces that fell off. Yeah, so it's I mean, not it's scary, but you can, if you, if you want to. Yeah. If you wanted to, you could, um, but, but it's not necessary. Now yeah. for the shells, um, you can, I just have a collection of shells. Again, you can buy the shells. I've seen them in the kids department, but they also have them, um, in the floral arranging area too. Um, but all these different shells, you can just hot glue them down if you want, or coming up, we're gonna show you, it's a sneak peek for you guys, um, the brand new spray Mod Podge Ultra, and we're gonna show you how that works. It works as a glue 
and a sealer, but it also works as an embellishment for glue. So if you wanted to do something like that for, this is a spray bottle, it's the Mod Podge Ultra. You would just go onto your, and, and don't worry, I'm just gonna show you one shell, but coming up, I'm gonna show you how we did this entire pebbles with this spray Mod Podge, and they are on, on solid. Um, with the spray Mod Podge, you just shake your bottle, I've already shaken this one before we got started. You spray it down. You literally just place your shell where you want it to be. And then I like to spray kind of at angles around it. And then you set it aside and you let it dry overnight. And once you dry it overnight, that will not come off. I wanna show you like on the, I can't pick it up right now because it's not, it will come up right now. But <laughs> these have been on and they are just solid solid. So we're going to get into this in a second. And again, this is a sneak peek. So Mod Podge Ultra is not going to be at Michael's for like four weeks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, but it comes in mid to end of July, guys. Yeah. So, and you know, all the stores are having, you know, it's like the, the people who manufacture the products, the products are trying to get it to the stores. The stores are trying to get, uh, I'm sorry. I know it's a tease, but we just wanted to show you what's happening, what's coming up. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna put them back into position and set this over here so it will dry. Yes. Now, let's talk about party lights. So this is a paper ball lantern. Steve, you've got a big one there, right? Yeah, I got a big one right here. This is the, um, the larger one. These are the paper lanterns right here. And this was done also with the tissue paper and these little round tissue papers you can buy and in the stores, usually in the party sections. So we didn't cut out each individual uh, round tissue paper. We're not that crazy. Um, and this was done with the gloss also, and it's the same thing. You just put it on with the gloss in an arrangement that you want to. These are great for uh, indoors and for outdoors. Again, not rain resistant, guys. So if you're gonna put them outside for a party or something, great, but they need to come back in. Um, and this was done with the gloss. I just want to show you really fast um, before we move on that this is, if you guys are new to this, this is the gloss and this is the eight ounce bottle of the uh, Mod Podge gloss. And here's a large one if you guys are planning on uh, doing some big projects, great for classrooms or clubs, this is the 64. And this is the one with that great gloss shine. This is the bottle of the matte. So this is our uh, 16, ounce bottle of the matte and that's the yellow bottle so if you didn't want that super shine that super um sheen of the gloss this is the bottle that you'd be using it does the exact same thing it's just a very very matte finish so and here it is kathy's going to show you kathy are you actually going to be demonstrating this for a minute yeah yeah yep yeah okay so um someone's asking if it's wind resistant yes um you know they're these paper lanterns are all at the party um section this is the gloss finish so it has a shine to it um these are confetti okay i have it bagged up because i didn't want it to blow everywhere but um with the um these confetti polka dots like this these are with the balloons in the party section so some people call it um balloon filler you will find this a lot for um gender reveal parties like they'll be pink or blue when you pop a balloon or something like that but steve and i absolutely adore using these polka dots yeah, for awesome. so much stuff so yeah. um let's just show you quickly it was very one. therapeutic doing the the uh the lanterns don't you think yeah. Kat? <laughs> they're so easy yeah no so, i'm just gonna put a few of them out and um basically on your paper lantern for this one, we did stripes and then we filled in with the polka dots, okay? So then you'll just do that. This is a great project if you're watching a movie. Let me just pick one up, there place it right on there. So can, easy. I like to kind of fling them around like this so they separate. Because if they separate, you can just pick one up with your brush. I don't even use my hands, I just pick it up. Go right along it's basically that line. one stroke. You pick up and you seal at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. 
just like that. And you'll see on these lanterns, there's a seam. So a really great tip is just to follow that seam. All the work is done for you. You just pick yeah. it up. Again, this project is basically, guys, it's taking a plain paper lantern and giving it um, just a really amazing decoration because when these things are lit up, mm -hmm. they're so much prettier than just the plain white tissue. And it's so simple. You know, if you want to do something for 4th of July, you just do red, white, and blue colors. If you want to yes. do Christmas, do the Christmas colors, you know. Customize it to your party. Hey, again, guys, there's going to be really quickly, uh, we're picking at random uh, somebody for a basket of Mod Podge products, great basket. So if you have not gone into the chat yet, just say hello, tell us where you're from, say hello, because it's going to be randomly picked from the chat. Um, there we go. Look at it. It's moving fast now. Good. Uh, uh, Plaid puts out some great baskets. So you guys will be receiving um, everything you see tonight, today, and more. So for the center, we're just filling it in in a random section. I mean, a random pattern, I should say. And what I did was I saturated the whole area. Somebody was asking about cleaning the brushes. Mod Podge is water-based. That's what makes it awesome and kid-friendly. And that's what also makes it so easy to clean your brushes, just water, soap and water. I usually just do water. Um, if you have it sitting for a long time and it dries out, let it soak for a minute. Very yeah. easy. Sometimes I go in, I rub my fingers in there. I mean, you know, it's very simple though. But that's how quick and fun for just doing some fun party lanterns like this. You can, sometimes you, know, you can hang a light in them or you can just hang them from trees, whatever you want. Very, very simple. Again, just thinking about when you were at the store and you see something like these tissue paper polka dots, what can I do with those? You know, there's so many things. You could even do, actually you could even do the beach art with these. You could just do polka dots and blend them all together. Let's see how we're drying. I wanna bring this back up a few times so that you can see it's starting to dry. Yes. It's still very milky. I bet by the end of the class, it might be, we might be close to being dry. Let's see. Yes, okay. this project is great for clubs. This is great for a, an assembly line of people just working together. It's, it's really a fun project. You can get a lot done. and You can get a whole strand done in one night for a party. You we have a couple, for have a couple people working along. Yeah, they're, they're fun. Ugh. Okay, now what I want to show you is another idea for lighting. Thanks, These are Kim. those flameless candles. Okay, very cool. And again, we're working with tissue paper because we've got a beach tissue paper theme going on. So I have, I'm going to lay this here so you can see where we're going with it. Okay, so I have one that started. Oh, I should show you this. This is an ivory candle, okay? So you get a warmer color, and this one is a white one, so you get a slightly cooler color. So depending upon what you're going for, look at, you know, do I want the ivory or do I want the white, okay? And again, if you were doing a wedding or something like that, you could do all these with white tissue paper or gold tissue paper or whatever the wedding color is. This is a really simple, simple, technique. And for this, we're going to use our tissue paper. Oh, here we go. I cut some squares already. Here's our squares. So you're just going to cut out squares of tissue. This is the same exact tissue that we used on our artwork. They're random squares. Basically, I folded all the tissue paper and I just cut, cut. I didn't measure nothing, okay? And it's the same deal. You're just gonna add. I like to do this overlap to get that sort of, I don't know, like retro 60s kind of feel. You could do it perfectly straight if you wanted to, but I sort of like that window pane overlook like that. And it's a no finger project again, Kath, huh? Oh, yeah. Brush. Yeah, just kind of step, throw your tissue down and then just pick it up. Whoa. And there you go. And you, the main thing is you just keep adding your, you know, add your Mod Podge around like that and just pick it up and you can go a different direction. Yes, it has been very mid-century looking. 
Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I was, the word I was looking for. I think I said retro, but yes, yeah. I like that. I mean, and if you wanted to, you could keep spaces in between, you know, again, there's really no right or wrong way. You could do the um, confetti dots. You could do the dots on here if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. There we go. You could even do the, the beach scene, really. You could crinkle tissue all the way up it. We've not, that's one thing we haven't made, Steve. What's that? Uh, we haven't done a beach scene on a candle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I, I feel like we've done everything else. So, we'll edit, you know. <laughs> so you just keep doing it until you go all the way around like that. Now, what I want to show you, normally you would be all the way finished, okay? But I want to move on and show you other ideas because I know that you get this, right? You get it. So let's talk about the sand at the bottom. So we did the sand on the artwork and it's the same thing. We sealed that same, yes, any flameless candles work. So we're gonna just take, I will use the bigger brush, we'll get it on faster. Just kind of do, again, sort of an organic, you don't, you can do a straight line if you want, if that's the look you like, or you can do a part of an organic look. And this is sort of the organic look. You can see it just kind of has, it just looks like we dipped it in sand, okay? And then you'll just sprinkle your sand right onto your candle and tap off. And let dry. And then you'll just set it aside and let it dry. That's and once it dries, you can kind of, you know, pluck any of those funny little ones if you don't like them off. And it'll be just like this. Looks great. So really fun really fun if you're having a party you want to do a centerpiece i have a six and seven year old so i'm a huge fan of flameless candles yeah because i can set them out and do centerpieces with them we do these types of candles all the time hey can, let's, let's move over really quickly kath before uh -huh. you start something else i want to show our viewers these brushes really quickly okay and the reason why i want to show these is because we use these specifically um, these are specifically made for Mod Podge. Uh, you can see how they're, they're flat and they're straight across. So these brushes here work very, very well with Mod Podge. The, um, not much streaking um, and they're designed, even the, the handles are designed to where you can really grip onto them, hold them well. They're super comfortable and they're great, great bristles. Here's another one really quickly. This is for a wider project that you guys might want to use. So if you guys are looking for brushes for Mod Podge specifically, these are the ones. And these are in the Mod Podge section at Michael's. Here's also some detailed brushes that are a great seller over at Michael's because they are super quality and we just love them. The only reason we're showing you this is because with Mod Podge, these are the kind of the supreme um, of them all to uh, use while you're doing your projects. These were great on glass, wood, canvas, um, ceramics, all sorts of things. So I just wanted to show that, Kath. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that gave me the perfect amount of time to get set up for our next. See, Did I you know? knew that. That's why I knew that. <laughs> you knew I needed it. Yeah. So I want to show you these fun uh, little recycled jar makeovers, okay? I hope you guys can see that sparkle. Can you guys see that glitter? There we go. I think my light's catching that glitter. That glitter is from our Mod Podge Sparkle Formula. So these, you can buy mason jars, you can recycle spaghetti jars. This is my Trader Joe's uh, hot pepper jam jar, which is my favorite jam. And um, it's my favorite little size also. These are um, candle holders. You do want to use battery operated candles with them because the work is done on the inside, okay? If you wanted to do the work on the outside, you can. You would brush it on like we've done on this recycled, dare I say it, beer bottle, okay? Wow. So you can put lights in there. So basically what you're gonna do is I like to start with some sort of a recycled food container and you're going to pour in it the sparkle Mod Podge. Okay, that's the pink label. And that's got the glitter is already in it. If you don't have the sparkle formula, 
you can add glitter to the gloss formula. You'll have to play around with how much you want to add. Um, and it works best with ultra fine glitter. If you're adding your own ultra fine glitter. And if you want it to be, oh, sorry guys, that um, kind of rainbow Aurora Borealis, you want to use that clear sparkle, okay? The one that looks kind of like a rainbow. And then I just have food coloring. Food coloring is going to create that clear look, okay? Um, so just grab it any color you want. We're doing blues because of our beach theme, but this works with any, any color that you want to use. And again, these are great at the holidays. You want to do Halloween ones, do them all orange and then mm -hmm. add some pumpkin faces. No, you can't really wash these jars later. You can wipe down the outsides because the work is done on the outside, or I mean, the work is done on the inside. Um, but you can't really wash wash them. You can hand wash them or wipe them, but you couldn't put them in the machine. Somebody so re really loves it. Somebody oh, really. Oh well, loves thank you. <laughs> on the chat. So who is? Okay, so I mixed it up. And it's going to dry a lot. It's so you can see the different colors. That's the same color. It's going to dry a little bit lighter. You can use paint instead, but the problem with paint is that it's not a problem. It's a different look. It's going to give you a milk glass look. So it will be more foggy and look like milk glass, and it won't have this clear stained glass look. So for candle holders using the battery ones, I like to use um, the food coloring. Yeah, so guys, I think the question is what color is it? it's yes, it's whatever color you choose. It's the food coloring. So if you did green, red, blue, that's what color it's going to end up being. Kathy's using the blue right now, but you could make this any color with, with whatever food coloring you want. You could even mix food colorings together to get a very um, unique color too. Like you can make purples and violets and all sorts of things. So now we're just going to pour it into, it's kind of hard to see that just pouring it into my jar my clean jar now it's a little trial and error with how much to mix and how much to make okay so if you didn't have enough you would just need to mix a little bit more and pour it in yeah. so now it's in my jar and i'm going to take it and just swirl it you can't even see the glitter but this is filled with glitter again when it dries it's going to dry clear and super sparkly okay yeah. This is very fun for kids. And this is a great way to recycle those old jars. Oh yeah. I drive everybody nuts at the house because <laughs> I have so much recycling going on. Make an old jar look new again. The, the whole joke at my house is, are we keeping this or are we recycling? We're keeping it. I got a whole section in my garage. Of, yeah. Sometimes when I'm shopping for food, I'll look at something and say, look at that pretty jar. <laughs> yeah, so it does dry clear, guys. Hold that other one up, Kath, would you have the dry one? You can see the difference. So that's what she's doing now. So you give it a couple hours, it's going to turn into that with all those sparkles coming through. Yeah, so you, you can't put water in it because the glue is all on the inside, okay? So you want to be able to just use, um, you could do silks or you could do... Um, you know, battery operated candles, that kind of thing. Oh, someone's saying same at my house. Yeah, you can do an ombre effect. If you wanna do an ombre effect, you need to do one color at a time. So you just do a little bit and you have to wait for that to dry, okay? Now, at this point, if you're doing an all over look like this, you turn it upside down and I use an old lasagna pan. You can see that we've used this for many, many, many different projects and um, it's starting to all just seep down, okay? So it looks like I mixed up enough and it's kind of trial and error. So if I hadn't mixed up enough, I would just add a little bit more Mod Podge to here and a little bit more of my food coloring, okay? So now at this point, you will set this aside. I like to let it sit upside down like this for about five hours and after five hours or basically when I remember, I don't actually set a timer for it, then all of the uh, Mod Podge with the food coloring would be sealing, covering this. Then I turn it right side up and I let it dry overnight. Okay, so that just, you, you'll, you want all of the Mod Podge to go to the bottom first, upside down to really get an even coat and then you turn it after five hours and the air coming in will let it to dry really nicely. 
So we've so been asked, can you use this on plastic jars? I have done it on plastic, yeah. but you have to test because not all, it doesn't stick to all plastic. Very because plastic well. sometimes has a very, it has certain plastics have coatings on them yeah. and the Mod Podge could peel up. So do a test before, but it does work on plastic for sure. It's just not all plastic. If it doesn't have that coating, you're okay. Uh, yeah, you could store like wrapped candies in it. Um, I've done these as gifts before. So, and then again, you can finish them off with ribbons, ropes, whatever you want to do. You can add um, wire to the top and hang them from the trees. I mean, it's endless. These are also really great uh, teacher gifts, things like that. If you're putting lights inside, uh, yeah, you can put sand on them. The sand in the Mod Podge will stick to glass, no problem. The same way it stuck to our little waxed, our flameless candles. Um, I do want to show you this jar here is done with just the gloss formula. So that's why you don't see any sparkle on that one, okay? So that was just the same food coloring. Oops, sorry guys, I have a new camera here. Same food coloring and um, no glitter in this one because it was the gloss formula. Thank you, Morgan. Okay, and then we have this one, which is our sparkle, sparkle, sparkle one lots of sparkle and that one was done with the food coloring and the sparkle formula okay so it's that simple literally i mean they're just so fun and so easy now if you wanted to do something like this right i guess i put some bottle lights in that is got a brush here to show you that is this you just brush it on okay now, this up here, this whole bottle is about four coats, okay? So you just brush it on like that. Do that, let it dry about 20 minutes. Do another coat, let it dry. Do that four times, and then it will be just like this. So if you wanted to do a vase, or you wanted to put a taper candle in there, or you wanted to do some party lights, just like that. So it's very simple. So this one I could fill with water and put a flower coming out of it, okay? So just take a look at your recyclables, your glasses that you have, like what can you do with it? At Michael's they've got a gazillion different glass containers that you can make over, you know, a hundred different ways. I love all that vintage stuff. So sometimes you see those cool shaped ones and we've done those in oranges and yellows and it's just, they're so fun to do. So you just really gotta look at the, the shape of the glass and think, oh, what can I do with that? <laughs> Absolutely, and remember guys that this class is being recorded, so you can go to michaels.com. There we go. We put it right on up there. If you uh, are just joining us, you can see this from the beginning. And we are also going to be picking somebody at random for a nice basket of Mod Podge products from Plaid. Pop, 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 pop. Uh, so just in the chat room, say hello to us. Tell us where you're from just to get in because we're going to be randomly picking that at the end. So now I want to move on to um, some other types of projects. Let me see. I got to clear some space. Okay. So we talked about the tissue paper earlier and I want to show you this vase here. Okay. So this vase is done with the same technique that we did. Sorry, I'm getting wet glue all over it with my hands, so I apologize. We use the dark tissue here, the medium tissue here, and the light tissue here, okay? So it's the same technique. I'm gonna show you on this other um, bottle how we put the tissue paper down, but I just wanna show you, again, just doing those three different colors. If you had five colors, you just work your way up from the darkest to the lightest. The same way we finished off our candle holder here, you can do leather roping, charms. You can just add whatever you want to it. We were going with a beachy theme, so we use these pearls and things like that. So it's, you know, really endless. These are great, easy, easy makeovers that you can hey, do. Do you know if the lights are sold at Michael's, the bottle lights, Kev? I forget. Yeah, I think they are. I they cannot are. Okay. Them. I couldn't find them online, though. But, yeah. Uh, I have bought them of, there before. A lot of They're people are asking, yes, definitely check Michael's for the bottle lights. Yeah. Um, okay, so then we were talking about sand, and I meant to show you this earlier. I'm sorry, guys, but 
I remember I was telling you there's a couple of different shades of sand. So here's that sort of white sand, and then this is more uh, the caramely colored sand. So you can do, uh, yes, that was tissue paper on the bottle. That was all tissue paper, same tissue paper as the beach artwork. So um, this one was done the same way. We just applied the Mod Podge to the letter, sprinkled the sand over it, and then glued down some embellishments. So this is just, again, thinking of ways that you can use Mod Podge, not just as a glue and a sealer, but what else can we glue with it, you know? Okay, so let's do, are you guys ready for our next, are you ready? We've got some more tissue paper art that I want to show you. Oh, I'm going to get these food colorings out of here before, <laughs> before I clean a mess. Um, We've got these really fun pebbles that we're gonna work with. And we have the tissue paper from earlier, the ombre tissue paper. And this is the Celebrate It brand. So you can see it goes from the green to the light, okay? And um, I have torn it into strips and then I cut it in half. And then I'm going to cut it in half just by tearing it one more time. Okay. So let's make a little room here. Oh my goodness, guys. There's so many fun projects up here. So this is a whiskey, well, no, nope, bourbon, bourbon whiskey bottle. And I really like this shape. Um, what I like about this shape is that it gives me a lot of surface to apply rocks or shells or any kind of embellishment that you want to have, okay? So somebody said, that's my dream. <laughs> this is my husband. <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with, I don't wanna use my tinted Mod Podge. We're gonna start with just our regular gloss Mod Podge. And because I'm working with tissue paper, like I said in the beginning, I like to use it in a, um, just in a tub like this just a, something that you could um, disposable. This is an old food container. Because sometimes the tissue paper makes, um, it bleeds depending upon the color. So you don't wanna get that into your um, bottle of Mod Podge. You don't wanna contaminate it. So I'm just gonna apply the Mod Podge directly to the bottle. So like I said, I like this bottle because it has a nice flat surface here. Um, which makes it, like I look at this, I say, oh look, that looks like a little canvas. So my big sheet, I cut my big sheet into quarters. And this tissue paper is so nice because <laughs> it already comes with the ombre done for us. You just lay that down right onto your bottle. Smooth that out. Oh, good. Someone's saying they have a bunch of different light bottle lights at Michael's. That's great. Yeah. And yes, you can use glitter. You can embellish um, almost anything on top of what we've already done. So if you wanted to add glitter, it's you do it the exact same way we did the sand. Just add some Mod Podge, and then you can sprinkle glitter right on top of that. Yes, you can also mix the glitter into the Mod Podge. The only thing is, again, do a test because sometimes the glitter doesn't actually pop the way it would if you sprinkle it on top. Yeah. Okay, so you're just gonna kind of go around and add your paper just like that. And I like all these wrinkles. So you, I, I, that's to me what gives the bottle, you know, all the character once it's dry. That's the texture, okay? Some people hate wrinkles, but yeah, it does work on ceramic, okay? So um, now at this point, I would wait for this to dry and then I would work on the other side of it. But what I wanna show you, so what I like to do is put the large sheet over the top, let it dry, flip it over, and I do that same large sheet on the back. But I'm gonna skip ahead um, just to show you what I would do next. So imagine that the back side is already done. Then I like to take my tissue paper and I tear it into strips, okay? And we're gonna apply those strips 
we'll start at the top. This is still pretty wet, so I really don't need to add too much. We'll start with our lightest color. Can you just add, well, we'll scoot it over and tear that off. Let's add that one down and mm. add another one. And we're just adding texture, just adding the texture. Now we've got kind of a little bit of the next color. Add a little bit more there. And then we'll add at the very end, our darkest piece. And see how it kind of has just random, random tears. You want that, you want that sort of random. That's what gives it that sort of old layered up look. Yeah, I, this project we were sort of imagining this is like the old message in a bottle, you know? So you, you want it to have kind of texture and ombre going up. And then you're just gonna top coat it. Hey, Stacy, are you there? Is there any way we can do something about this hack? Oh. Let's see if Stacy's here. Yeah, it's, it's dominated, it's just taking over. I'm sorry, you guys, about this. Yeah. Uh, I'll kick them off. Okay. It's just too much. Or I think you can make it so they can't tie. I'm not sure how Stacey that Stacy knows what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's, it's really, really wet. And so when it's wet, it's very Welcome. hard to see um, the, the color difference, okay? But I made one and it's dry. So that's what it looks like when it's wet. And then this is what it looks like when it's dry, okay? So now, let's pull this one over. I'm gonna set this aside and I'll show you. You're so welcome, guys. It was, it was annoying. Yeah. So there's the dry one, okay? And um, this is what it's gonna be like when it's finished, okay? So what we're gonna do is I've got a heart cut out of a Triscuit box and we'll just place it right here and trace around with the pencil. You could do any shape. It's a very faint line, but I think you guys can see that a little bit, yeah? Yeah, we can see it good, Kath. Okay, so here we go. This is yes. the Mod Ultra, all right? <laughs> and um, if you did not have Ultra, you could use a heavy-duty glue. You could use hot glue. Uh, you could use Mod Podge, really, really thick, thick, thick Mod Podge, okay? This product is going, is a sneak peek. All right, so it's going to be out in one month. So it's it's starting to ship right now, um, but it will take a while before the, the different Michael stores can get it onto the shelf. So you want to, someone's asking about cardstock for the first project. Yeah. I think that person's referring to the artwork. Are you talking about the artwork? You could do this on cardstock, but it would need to be really thick, more like cardboard, I think. But you could do it on recycled cardboard for sure. Um, so now what I'm gonna do, I have my pebbles ready to go. And what you're gonna do is just spray the bottle with Mod Podge, just like that. I like to do this in a tray or on a protected work surface because it does have a little bit of overspray. And then you're just gonna take your rocks and kind of, you can place them on the outer edge first if you want to like so um, you have a lot of time to play with your design when you're using the spray and the ultra it's not like um, a super glue or something like that so you can really move your rocks into position uh, and it's it seems weird steve you kind of got to jump in because i yeah, okay let me explain this really quick guys because it's it's, it, not gonna it, believe it's it. i know what the questions are going to be it looks like kathy's just placing these down and she is. The deal is with the Ultra is that you spray it on top of a surface and whatever this stuff, whatever surface this is sprayed onto, you can just drop your embellishments. Meaning we're using rocks because they are heavy and that's why we wanted you, you can drop any embellishment onto any surface once the Ultra is sprayed, on, sprayed down on top of your surface and then you're going to top coat it by a spray too and then walk away and let it dry overnight. 
it is that strong. What's interesting about it is, like Kathy showed you, you can play around with these rocks right now, but there is, in time, within um, a couple hours, it's going to be rock solid where it doesn't move like a super glue. So that's the beauty of it. It's an all-in-one glue and sealer, and it's a spray. So that's the beautiful thing about it is, like right now, Kathy's going to spray on top of that. So it's not by using a brush like the regular Mod Podge that you have to go over. It's just a simple spray. Now, with the Ultra, you can brush on. You can use it as pouring. But the beauty of it is that it does have the spray. So Kathy's going to show you how to spray right on top of it. And then you leave it alone. And she'll show you the final project after a 24-hour drying time. And someone was asking if you could do this with a stencil. And Steve and I have done this with a stencil before and glitter with the, um, with the Mod Podge Ultra. You do kind of have to play around with it because the stencil needs to be pretty um, uh, uh, flat against the surface. So if you have a surface that's real textured, it will seep under it. So you, it really, if you're doing stencil, it works best that's flat to flat, okay? Um, so now at this point, I have my design. I hope my heart looks good. I was moving pretty quickly. It looks great. Now you're going to top coat it with the spray again. And I'm telling you, when this product first came to mind and Steve's attention, we didn't believe them. We were like, there's no way and <laughs> it, does. It, it does work. So now you're just going to go in and spray it with a top coat, OK? And now what I like to do is go onto the sides and I kind of move it around you know, making sure I'm getting all those edges. And it looks, um, I'm gonna pick it up, hopefully I don't knock all my rocks off. It looks like milk water. It looks like, yeah, milky water on it, but don't mess with it. All of that's gonna dry perfectly clear, just like that. And it is on it's, there, guys, like nobody's business. It will not move. I can't even pluck them off if I try. That's how yes. heavy duty they are. So what I love about it is this, okay, is that, you see how you get those spaces in between? If you were using real glue, like glue glue, you know, from a thing, you would have a, you know how it is, you put the glue on something, you push it down, then the glue comes out. Right. You don't get any of that when you do the Mod Podge Ultra. You yeah, there is no residue. It dries completely clear what Kathy is showing you right now. Uh, yes, you can use it on wood, you can use it on ceramic, you can use it um, on tin. You can use it on metal. So it works on practically every, all surfaces, just like a regular Mod Podge. And no, it doesn't leave texture. Someone's asking if it leaves texture. I mean, no. I'm gonna try to show you guys that the best. Some of those rocks have texture, because these are just, oh, and these pebbles, by the way, you get in the floral department too. We, we really went floral department wow. heavy. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a clear, smooth sheen with no texture. Mm -hmm. Yes, this will be in the stores in uh, mid to end July. And you can also order it on, online uh, during that time. So then for this, we just finished it off with that same rope because we kind of wanted to create a bunch of things that could coordinate together. Um, and then boom. So there's your whiskey bottle makeover. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Does it work on copper? Stuff. I would imagine yeah. it works on copper. That's a metal type. Yeah, so, yeah of course it does. Sure, um, sure. What kind of rope is that, Kath? Uh, this is just, I have it here. It is nothing fancy. No. <laughs> it's just, just a little rope, you know? Yeah. Um, I think this is from like where the macrame type stuff is. Um, there was some leathery bits and some rings and things like that there. I will say really quickly, going back to the Ultra guys, one major, major, major tip is make sure that your work surface is covered. You do not want to do this on a dining room table or a counter. You do not want this overspray to get on any of your nice surfaces. You want to make sure that you're protected because it is powerful stuff. Weirdly, it is completely water-based, so it's non-toxic but it is strong stuff and you do not want to get it on your tables or your countertops. Yes, I have a um, party tablecloth here from the dollar store that I just keep these on hand and I use them, I let them dry, I fold them back up, I put them back out. So yeah. I use this as a backdrop all the time. In addition, I do have it in a 
lasagna pan. I'm a huge fan of these. These are also from the dollar store. I've got stacks yes. of them. And I just have a little liner in here um, yeah. of wax paper because I don't want my bottle to actually stick. It is so strong. Yeah. And really um, and quickly is, also, let's let's tell them uh, the cleaning cap about just yeah. cleaning the nozzle after each and after each spray. So when you're one done. That's very important is to make sure that you clean your nozzle, okay? Just just give it a wipe with a baby wipe. That's it. Um, or a soapy paper towel or whatever. Um, someone's asked, the beer bottle was clear when we started. It was clear, it was a Modella. See, I'm, I'm always looking at shapes. I like the Modella shape. I don't even know if I like the Modella beer, but I like that little ridge. I do, there. I like the Modella beer too. <laughs> So just clean that and it does come with a cap. I always just like to recap it. And that way um, you don't want that tip to dry out because it, it dries very, very, very strong. Um, Carol put an order out online. Very good. I think you're going to love this. So here is a plain artwork. This is one of Michael's uh, wood surfaces. It's actually, you're supposed to do the artwork on this side, but we really like the back side. So for the back side, we did that same exact tissue paper technique where we took the dark and then worked our way up. And you can see all the different layers and the wrinkles. Again, we like all that texture. We wanted that. If you didn't want that, then you would want to just really go slow and you would want, no, the ultra is outdoor friendly. So once it's cured, once you wait overnight, you can set this outside. I had a project outside for a very long time as a test and yeah. uh, it's still going strong. So it's yeah, so if you guys can imagine all of your embellishments that you have in your craft rooms, just think what you can make with the Ultra. Again, it's putting it on any surface and it is not going to move. So again, we used rocks on purpose just to show you mm -hmm. how durable the Ultra is, but it works on all embellishments um, I really recommend you guys trying this out to see if you like it because it's a, it's an amazing new product coming out mid to end of July. We don't know the exact date, but it'll be here for sure by end of July. And um, yeah, we hope you love it. The other thing I want to say is that what's another reason why we like to show it on the rocks or the seashells is that many embellishments that you buy do have a flat back surface. Of course, it works amazing for that. But none of these rocks are flat backed. These are all real rocks. You know, these, this is, so even if it's just a tiny bit of the rock that's getting on there, it is secure, secure. So for this artwork here, I placed them down. I top coated it. I allowed it to dry overnight. And I did one more top coat just to seal it, just to, just for, just to try, you know, I don't even know if I needed to, but that was just me, but you can see, all those that. different shapes and how cool that is and it's just so quick it makes lovely gifts too if you want to you know doing gifts or little That's bazaars cool. and that kind of thing as well yes and oh my goodness i think we have gone through all of our crafts i want to show gone you that. Through everything i think this was an amazing class as far as mod podge goes and again guys we use the gloss mod podge starting off with the canvas the beach vibe there it is there so this uh, is still wet this is the one that we top coated on camera, but it's still wet, but I just want to show you how those colors end up blending together just by adding that blue top coat piece. So cool. So let's just quickly review everything that we did and then we'll say our goodbyes. Here's our beach art. As Steve said, everyone, this class will be available to watch from the beginning starting tomorrow. So this was our tissue paper, our Mod Podge, our sand, and our seashells, okay? We have that. We've got our party lanterns that we made with the balloon confetti tissue paper. So again, simple, simple tissue paper. We've got our flameless candles with our square tissue paper and sand. We've got our awesome glitter candle holders oh that one we just put a tassel on i just had that tassel in the craft room so you know you can use up any of your old supplies too here we can do it brush on for a bottle or do the pouring technique for, with the glass and we showcased 
how you can do that same tissue paper technique going up on a bottle. You could stick a candle in here if you wanted to, or just have it set out on your mantle or whatever. And we've got our really fun, I just, I just love this one so much. Our really little great. bottle lamp. And what else? We've got our heart art. And that one there? Art. Yeah. And we have our really fun monogram with our we go. A lot of projects today. And guys, if you <laughs> haven't, if you haven't uh, gone in the chat room yet, say hello to us. Uh, tell us where you're from because we're going to be randomly giving away a basket of Mod Podge products from Plaid. Right now, me and Kathy want to say thank you to Michaels because we think this is amazing, these new Zoom classes that we love to do, and we hope you guys love them. Uh, so thank you, Michaels. And again, Michaels is our craft store that we love to shop at because they've got everything we need. Oh, okay, the chat room's going crazy right now. Good. Um, we're going to give it about a couple more minutes uh, to get you guys in the chat room. And yeah, we're everybody. again going to be picking somebody randomly for a basket of Mod Podge products that everything you kind of saw here today, you'll be getting the basket plus some. And one more thing really quickly, I just want to show these brushes one more time. The Mod I, I Podge forgot brushes. I have one more craft to show. You what? I have one more project to show, but I'm not making it. You show the brushes. Okay. So <laughs> here are the brushes. Um, I recommend if you guys are doing the Mod Podge, if you guys are first starting off using, if this is your first time using Mod Podge, check out these brushes. They're really easy to work with. They're nice thick handles. The grip is great. And of course the detail brushes for your detailed stuff is wonderful. So we like to show everything Mod Podge really quickly. Here's the sparkle bottle. So because in the Mod Podge section, there is a huge family of Mod Podge. So this is the one we use today. It's the pink bottle and the gloss is the orange bottle. So these were the two, two Mod Podges that we use today. So you guys don't get overwhelmed in the store or if you're online, it's the pink and the orange were the two. The gloss, and again, if you guys aren't huge fans of gloss, you can do all these projects with the matte, and that's the yellow bottle. Okay, Kath, what did you have? Oh, I forgot. I have one more thing to show you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, the coaster. Yes. Everybody knows I love the recycling, right? So these are, this is actually a yogurt lid or sour cream lid, um, yeah. but so many people are loving to do Mod Podge and coasters. So this can be for plants or for a glass or whatever, but I just wanted to show you how you can just take literally something like a lid, and I did the Spray Ultra um, in the lid and put all the pebbles down and created this really simple, fast coaster. So I'm using this for a plant, which I am watering. It's not a fake plant. So it, will, it can take a little bit of water dripping out on it too. Once this is cured, it's outdoor friendly and um, it's, it, it's pretty crazy. I don't know how it works. <laughs> That's like some trade secret. <laughs> so, but just again, thinking of things that you have around and what can we do with them, you know? This is just a really fun, simple way to make a coaster. Okay, so here we go, guys. We're gonna pick. This is my favorite part. <laughs> okay, wait, ready? Here we go and uh it is carol 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 here carol carol is carol and it's just carol carol is there a carol is there a carol we're gonna carol, wait a couple minutes we're phone? gonna wait a couple minutes make sure you um if your name does get called you will be emailing a private message to Plaid Crafts on Facebook. Yes. Carol. Are we Thank here? you guys Carol. for all the nice comments. I really yeah, appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. You guys are very kind. A lot of accolades today. I love that. I don't mm. see Carol. You want to spin right. again? Let's spin it again. Here we go. Okay. Everybody's got a second chance. Okay. Here we go. And it is, let me see, oops, let me go down. Oh, Carol's there. Oh, thank goodness. We gotta, yeah, we gotta be careful with that. Ah, otherwise, Platt's gonna have to give out two baskets. Okay, Carol, yes. So Carol, private message Plaid and tell them that you are the winner of Kathy and Steve's Michael's Zoom class and you will, they'll take out 
take your all your information and they you will be hey, I can't speak receiving a great basket in the mail of Mod Podge products. Congratulations, Carol. Carol, it looks like you're saying that you cannot unmute yourself. Um, so if you can please type a message in there. If are you on Facebook? Are you able to Facebook message Plaid Crops? Carol, no. Okay. Oh. Carol, you will need to email, grab a pencil, communications at plaidonline.com. Stacy, can you write that in there? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's look at beautiful. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> made their artwork absolutely gorgeous. That looks beautiful. Let me Vanuetta? see. Wait. Is that correct? Where is That's it? I haven't great. seen it. Where is it? Let me see. You got to scroll oh. through. There oh, we go. and I don't have my glasses on. Arena, is it Arena? Yeah, beautiful. Oh, that is that. gorgeous. Great job, you guys. Great job. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> Linus said, can you send out two baskets? <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Carol. Steve and I don't have the ability to unmute you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to email communications at pladonline.com. Ad, that's beautiful. Awesome job, Ad. Thank you guys for crafting along. I know it's hard to craft along with us because we usually like to do a lot of projects all at once, but um, that's just kind of how me and Steve do it. So hopefully you guys like to see a lot of projects at once. Yeah. Well, the inspire and it looks like you guys did an amazing job. Look at all those. And remember, you you can just keep layering. No mistakes are made on this project, like um, D said. So hey, um, are we good, Kath? Did did Carol get all the information? Oh, there's two Carols. Oh. Uh. Oh, it's the first, it's, it's Carol number one. It's just Carol, not Carol Yim, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> I know, it's so hard. Carol with one L or two L's, Steve. I didn't roll. It's one L. Carol with one L. Oh. <laughs> I mean, sorry. I don't even have her back up. I see Carol with one L. That's it. How many carols do we have? <laughs> I know, it's kind of, we need to maybe ask for last initials because people do have the same name, right? Are we good? Two it's R Carol with one L. C-A-R-O-L. L, correct. Yeah. Not two R's. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's me. Sorry guys, this is terribly confusing. C A R O L one. Oh, that's you. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's Carol Yim. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Carol. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So we got it resolved. Well, Sorry for the confusion. Yeah, maybe next time we need to put a last, I know you, a lot of people don't like to put their last name, but we will next time have the first name and the last initial, just so there's no confusion. Because absolutely, there's plenty of Carol, you know, there's more than one Carol, more than everybody, a lot of people have the same name. So, okay, well, um, very good. Thank you guys for joining us. And um, we hope to see you again. This was our fifth Zoom class. So uh, stay tuned, we're hoping to do more. Uh, we have nothing scheduled right now, but um, we're hoping to do more Zoom classes. And thank you all very, very much. Appreciate yes, it. Yes, thank you. you Bye, guys. guys. Have a great weekend. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you for the sweet comments, too. Yes. Thank you for joining us.